Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Mother of the Redeemer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear our Lord rebuke and direct the apostles not to tell anyone a fact that actually is true. When Peter uh, speaks and says that, answers Jesus' question of who do you say that I am, he answers Christ, the Christ of God. And this is, in fact, the truth. Uh, so why is it that our Lord rebukes him and instructs the apostles not to tell this to anyone? It seems to even contradict uh, another place in the, in the gospel where it says that <clears throat> Jesus sent, sent forth the apostles to publish his coming and to preach the gospel. St. Jerome, uh, the great doctor and translator of scripture, says that there's a difference between preaching the Christ and identifying the Christ as Jesus of Nazareth. And so it's that that our Lord is prohibiting. He doesn't want at this point the apostles to tell the people that he is the Christ, but simply uh, that they be prepared in their hearts and minds for the Messiah. And so that's the limitation of their mandate is to prepare the people, but not yet reveal the name of the Redeemer, who is Jesus of Nazareth. This is similar to the way that St. John the Baptist was, before he identifies Christ as the Lamb of God, visually uh, seeing him and pointing him out and declaring, he, there is the Lamb of God, behold. Uh, he was preaching the coming of the Messiah, the one to come. And so th that's the limit right now of the message that our Lord wants uh, St. Peter and the apostles to preach. What is our Lord's reason for this prohibition? Uh, there's speculation, but these seem to be the um, most sensible explanations. First of all, he wants to avoid arousing the envy of the scribes. They're already after him, and uh, they could impede and limit his mission uh, if they're aroused to that uh, fact that he is the Messiah, or at least that uh, they wouldn't accept that perhaps, but that, the, that his own disciples were saying such would be a problem. Uh, he wants to also avoid exalting himself or have it appear that he's uh, exalting his own glory. Furthermore, he wants the people to be induced to claim him as the Messiah due to the miracles and the doctrine he preaches rather than uh, because his own disciples testify to the fact that he's the Messiah. Also, the time has not yet come for this to be known. Uh, the people still aren't ready to receive him and nor are the apostles prepared to deliver the message in its fullness. And finally, uh, if it were known prematurely, the fact that he is the Messiah, uh, it could become a hindrance uh, to his death uh, in that the people um, will resist allowing him to be crucified when in fact it's necessary. And so we learn from our Lord's uh, 
example and from this fact the important truth that we all must understand the truth of salvation is that uh, it doesn't come in this life our glory is not to be found here on earth but in the afterlife and prior to that uh, we must suffer with our Lord as a purification to be um, prepared then to enter into his glory uh, with him in the next life. Our Lord didn't seek to be um, identified and, and worshipped before he completed the mission that was entrusted to him, which uh, culminated in his sacrifice and re our redemption. May the mother of the Redeemer give us uh, the humility of her son, obtain for us this great virtue that uh, will allow us to accept the cross and to fulfill our mission. Praise be Jesus and Mary.